Hi guys, welcome to my kitchen. My name is Kenna and I am your favorite Cameroonian YouTuber based in Duala Kami. How are you all doing? How's everything going? I hope you all are doing good and fine and everything is going perfectly. I on the other part, I'm doing good. I cannot complain. Everything is basically fine for me. So yeah, if this is the first time you're seeing my face, I am like, who is this? Who is this coming? Welcome to my kitchen. This, that. But of course, I've already said my name is Kenna. Okay. So yes, it's Kenna. I'm going to be a favorite YouTuber if you're seeing me for the first time. So please say, click on that subscribe button first. Click on that subscribe button. So that we can become friends. We can talk to each other. Get to know each other. And for my oldies, thank you. Thank you very much for always coming back. I know it's not easy. I'm just so, so grateful that you people are always coming back and you're sticking with me. So we know that when I'm in the kitchen, it means it's a cook and chat with me. Or it's a kitchen video, basically. So, yeah, guys. This is... <laughs> A few minutes to 12 and that's when I'm doing my breakfast because I had a couple of runs to do. So yes, I'm doing my breakfast and I was like, can I just do breakfast and then I also want to peel plantain for lunch. So I'm like, boil plantain for lunch. So I'm like, can I, don't just be boring. Do something and be chatting with us, okay? So I want to prepare the, my dodo for breakfast. I want to eat dodo and egg for brunch, basically, because it's already almost lunch time. And then I boil plantain that was supposed to eat with vegetable for lunch so yeah i said let me come and just with you this is a topic that i wanted to talk about and i'm going to be brutally honest in this video i like i'm going to be honest so if you are ready for an honest conversation you know what go and take something to drink and like call somebody to come and watch with you or something because i am about to get really honest i'll be talking about intertribal marriages in cameroon my own experience how what i actually think about it i am going to be honest and some of you people you put to come to in that comment section and be brutally honest to about it because some of you people leave me to be just be burning my bridges i'm just burning my bridges on this youtube streets some of you are just there coming oh this is nice come and like your family members your aunties your in-laws they cannot see it me my own in-laws are hating me so please eh <laughs> people should come and tell me what you think in the comment section so um i've already put my oil on the fire that's what i always do when i want to fry i put oil on the fire first to get hot before i even start killing so this is my plantain like i said i'm going to be doing plantain for i'll be frying dodo and i'll also be i'll be frying dodo and i'll also be boiling plantain this fat fat one this ones are calling my name so <laughs> this is what i'm going to do my dodo. so let me arrange myself and start peeling and we can start gisting immediately because this topic is a hot one strange enough guys it looks like the prices of plantain are finally almost coming back to normal because for the last time that i've gone to buy plantain guys the prices are almost normal so i'm like oh my god please can these prices just go down plantain my kids really love plantain so much for plantain to be too expensive i beg because this i just went out and bought plantain for 1000 and before 3 30 this plantain will be finished okay so um like i said i'm talking about intertribal marriage in case you do not understand what i mean when i say intertribal marriages it's just married getting married to someone from a different tribe from a different region and just things like that so um in case you're not cameroonian in cameroon we have a lot of tribes we have many different tribes you see and it's quite common to see people getting married to people from different tribes in cameroon okay and we also have some tribes in Cameroon that people will be like, these tribes are very tribalistic simply because, oh, they don't like to marry out of the tribe. They like to marry each other and things like that. An example would be the Bantu people. Another example would be the Bayangi people. <laughs> you always hear a lot of people saying that these people, Bayangi people, Bantu people, they like to get married to each other. They like tribality. You see tribalism? Yes. And funny enough, my husband is from Bayangi, but he got married to me. Okay, so growing up personally, I had always said I want I don't want to get married to a man from my tribe. Yes, I was one of those girls. I was like, um, I cannot marry a calm man or a bank a banky man. I don't see why I'll get married to any of these people because I had never seen a calm or a banky man that I found attractive. 
they only cute and modern come and babanki people i knew were my family members inside my head so i was like no offense so i'm just saying from the ones that i came across so i was like i don't want to get married to anybody from my tribe i can get married from any tribe but i don't just want to get married to anybody from come to the land here. the oil is hot so let me put in the plantains and then i come back but first i will sprinkle in a little bit of salt are you the salted dodo person or you prefer your dodo non salted i feel like i should add one more plantain because i'm showing that i'll eat this thing only when i come back with myra okay yeah so like i was saying guys i was that girl i was that like i was saying guys i was that girl that was always like i don't want to get married to any guy from my tribe And it was really a film for a film series because inside my head they were not just modern they were not just yeah they were not modern they were just primitive that's what I just thought guys it's not like I saw somebody from my tribe that was primitive but that was just a feeling I had like I must have not really seen any guys so I was mostly attracted to people from different tribes <laughs> And then another thing too was I was always saying I don't want to get married to a francophone. I don't want to get married to a francophone. Why? Simply because I just feel feel like I don't want my children. I don't want my children to be confused. Today we're speaking French. Tomorrow we're speaking English. Like I do not want that kind of thing. So I was like, mm -mm, I don't want that kind of stress in my house. I want in my house that they should speaking one. They should be speaking one language. So any francophone who said good morning to me, I already said goodbye. I don't want to be in a relationship with anybody like that okay i was just like mm -mm. i don't want i don't want to find myself in that kind of situation so as we always say <laughs> normally in life you say some of those things when you're younger but as you grow you start seeing life differently you start seeing that okay marriage is not all about somebody's tribe and just things like that but to be very honest with you guys there are some people like some family some family members will tell you like i don't want you to i don't want to hear that you're getting married to a man from this tribe i don't want to hear that you're getting married to a man from that tribe i don't want to hear just things like that but i never for me my family never really like they have never really told me told me that don't get married to this person from this tribe who don't marry my dad had just made one statement when we were younger and i'm sure he was joking he was just like ah kenna don't go and bring a bakosi man here oh bakosi people have witchcraft <laughs> that was what my father had told me once so and i think like he was joking like bakosi people that's the impression that a lot of people have like bakosi people witchcraft and things like that so that was the statement that was the only statement or well, like i say tribalistic statement my father had ever said my dad had never told me that oh i want to get married only to somebody from com or oh, my mom had never told me that so it wasn't really an issue and my sister's husband was also from the bayangi land we had had many cousins who i got married to people from the bayangi land so my parents they basically just embraced my husband like it was not a big deal the only thing i can remember was that a statement was made like bayangi people when their women die like when their wives die they take the wives back to the they take their wife back to their to the wife's parents house you get and to us non-westerners it's not like that which means if i die today obviously i'm supposed to be buried with my husband so but for buying the people if i die they normally have to carry me back so at this point i don't know what will happen if i die today i don't know where they'll bury me and then my husband now will be like no in our culture you have to go back to your father's house or my father will be like no i don't know <laughs> but that's just it so as I was growing, I discovered that we're paying, I'm paying attention to some things that really do not matter. So as time was going on, I became more open, like, well, I can marry anybody. I can, I can get married to somebody from any tribe. I never really had a problem getting married to somebody from the Northwest region, from, sorry, from the Southwest region, because I know girls who tell you that I'll write that home, please, I cannot get married to you. A guy from the southwest, southwest guys are lazy. Some will be like southwest guys are flirts. Some will be like southwest guys like, and there's a clear difference, guys. There's a clear difference. I know a lot of times some people are like, no, there's no difference, but there's a clear difference for me. I always see the difference, 
between guys from the northwest and guys from the southwest even our cultures you get even our cultures are different i learned a lot of things like that and i'm one of those people that will tell you that see to get married to somebody from your tribe right it is way easier or somebody from your region is way easier because your traditions and customs align with each other like majority of the traditions that i see in the northwest is common like almost all northwesterners do that there are little differences here and there but almost all northwesterners do that and also when it comes to the southwest region you see that majority of their traditions most of them do those things you see so it's going to be easier to get married to somebody from your region because guys ha see the difference is between my husband's culture and my culture there are some things that sometimes it could be for birth or for birth my husband is just like okay now we don't do this thing i don't understand this thing why are you put doing it like that it will be causing unnecessary fiction so moments like that i just sit and i'm like oh my god if i had gotten married to somebody from my tribe it would be way easier it would be way easier if i got married to someone from my tribe i just know that okay we know that okay when they give birth this is what happens this is how it goes this is how it goes this is how we go we move when this thing is happening if somebody dies this is what happens this is what happens we move but now occasions will happen with my husband you have to explain it and explain it sometimes explain and explain and explain sometimes he will understand sometimes he's just like it's not his tradition he cannot do it he doesn't understand you get so just that friction like that mm -mm. it's not easy another thing is that part of traditional language you go and get married to somebody i know like <laughs> The funny part is, Kenna, I don't even know my own traditional language. I don't know come, I don't know Babanki. I can pick little words here and there. Then now, I go and get married now to a man from Bayangilam. He too, he can pick little words there. What dialect are we teaching our children? My kids do not know come. They don't know Babanki. They don't know Bayangi. They don't know anyone. So at the end of the day, we are raising kids that really do not embody the culture like that does it make sense because there's always going to be that pool oh no even if let's say you are in a in a marriage where you you understand your traditional language very well and your husband also speaks his own very well it's always still going to be a push and pull because which language do you teach your children you are speaking in um let me say bakosi language to your daughter your wife is speaking Dwala language to the child at the end of the day so you understand <laughs> So that language part for me, it's just something that I'm like, oh my god, this part is so painful. It doesn't only end there. You can imagine you you are not understanding. You're not understanding what people are saying. Hmm? You now go to your in-laws house. Your in-laws are showering you with the greatest insults on earth. The greatest insults on earth. You two are just there. <laughs> they say, see this one, she's a fool. And they turn and tell them, no, I seen that you are very beautiful. Our brother is lucky you are smiling when they are insulting you and just things like that. So <laughs> I'm like, no, 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 no. Intertribal marriages is not, it's not an easy thing. But yes, it's very common. We see people getting married like that every single day. We see there are so many in that. It's actually difficult instead to see many people married to, oh, I'm married to this person for my tribe. I'm married to this person for my tribe. Because to be very honest, when you're in the dating world, that's, not really something you put first right like it's not something you put first like no um, i want to get married to somebody from this particular tribe except it really means a lot to you but most people they really don't like when a guy sees you he and uh, he's attracted to you he really does not think like oh yeah, if he's from this particular tribe or not mm -mm. all of us just feel like no you can mingle with anybody you can date anybody and it's only it's only later on that you start thinking of those things but yeah there are a lot of people who are married how they say it, who are having in in intertribal marriages and they are really struggling and mm, it's so painful guys it's so painful <laughs> it's not easy like being married to in an intertribal mm, intertribal marriage god guys I can, I've, I've talked about the meals I learned how to cook, the meals I heard for the first time when I got married. It's a struggle. It's not an easy journey to get married in an intertribal marriage. Imagine me. I don't know anything about... I don't eat okra. I don't know anything about tancho soup. I don't know anything about pool fish and just things like that. But 
I got married to a man who is from the Southwest region, and those are Southwest meals. Those are meals that are pretty common in the Southwest. I grew up in the Southwest, guys. I came to the Southwest when I was 11 years old. But we are not really those people that go to people's house, go and eat. And funny enough, majority of my friends too were from the Northwest. It wasn't like it was planned or anything, but all, all my friends were actually from the Northwest. So we were eating the same kind of thing. If I go to their house, we eat the same kind of thing. So I didn't really um, know a lot about the Southwest culture and things like that. So I was shocked, like, oh my God, like, what are these meals? Is it that my mother did not know how to cook or my mother did not know meals or what are these things so that came as a shock to me i had to start struggling to blend like it's a whole lot it's a whole lot that people people really do not talk about but getting married intertribal marriage is not easy especially we all know that especially for the girl it's always not easy because you're struggling to you're struggling and like i was there trying to learn how to cook new meals trying to learn how to understand okay according to these people's tradition this is how it goes there are certain things that maybe to us will look at it like disrespectful but to my husband he's like no it's normal i don't understand you get so he could do something now to my mom for example or to my dad to my parents and they're feeling like oh this guy is disrespectful how can he do this when it wasn't even his intention to be disrespectful so see in the travel marriage is it's not it's not being no be beings <laughs> no be beings that's why i always just i'm always just like you know what if you can see somebody that you love and you are compatible from your same tribe please marry them it's going to ease you a lot of stress it's going to issue it's true at the end that all marriages have their struggles you still have your own different things to struggle with but you see that part to be thinking oh uh, oh according to my husband tradition is like this according to my own tradition is like this which way should we go should we go this way should we go that way if they follow your way oh now woman the control house if they follow your own husband oh now man the control house see those are some of the things that will make marriage difficult so if you ask me i'll tell you if you are from bakwere marry a bakwerean though a lot of people say bakwere bakwere the marriage always scatters i don't know but if you are married if you are from a particular tribe just go and look for your, your person from that tribe if you don't want this type of wahala because these are some of the realities of marriage where you get into the marriage sometimes oh i'm in love oh i'm in love no please I love him, he loves me, there's never going to be any problem, and then boom, you get married, and sister say no, before, okay, let me give you a good example, when I was pregnant, let me check my pen, when I was pregnant, if there's one thing that buying the people are known for, is pump, pumping, I in putting that pump in the bum bum, and especially when women, their women are pregnant, they pump a lot, but see guys, the last time I pumped was when I was a, I was a child, you get it? So I can remember when I was pregnant and almost giving birth my mom, my mother-in-law was like, can I don't pump? I'm like, no. Hey, Jesus, she shouted. Like, what? How have you not pumped? Yeah, guys, so my mom-in-law was in shock. Like, hey, huh? how are you not pumped? Because in Bayangi people, or people from the Southwest, they will be pumping like when they are pregnant they pump like five times i know my friends who pump and they're like can i never pump how i was like i don't pump like what i knew i had to do from what my aunt had told me was that before you give birth you're going to she gives a laxative she gives me a laxative she's a midwife she gives me a laxative i take that's why i clean my system i never knew me about this pump my mother was like, Lord, like how does it happen how does it happen you get so <laughs> those are just the, the differences she was like you cannot go and give birth where you have not pumped and all things like that and we're having a little back and forth there because i'm like no i don't i've never heard that you have to pump and things like that that's just their tradition for us pumping or not pumping is not really a big deal but for them you have to pump it's just like i've, I've not seen any biology girls like my friends that are biology i've not seen any of them that do not pump and sometimes i used to take my children because i don't like that activity pumping for me it's so straight out. i used to take my kids to my friend to pump them my when my mom was here my mom used to pump them but i used to take my kids to pump for my friend to pump them but i cannot remember the last time i pumped them maybe i should <laughs> maybe i should pump them but yeah guys that's just it that's what i think about this whole intertribal thing i feel like it's a discussion that before you're getting into a marriage you have to talk about it let me pick up my
Africa, Cameroon, Cameroonian house. Our oven, our ovens are our storage. <laughs> it's been a while since I used the oven. Anyway, guys, let me just end this video here. So, like I was saying, um, I feel like this tribe out this um in the tribal marriage thing, marrying somebody from another tribe, it's something that you want to really think hard before you get married to someone. I know that um, back in the day, we used to say, oh, I don't want to marry this person for shallow reasons. But if you look at your reason and you feel like these are things that you know deep inside you that you cannot deal with, you cannot handle, you will not be able. My dear sister, it's okay to leave it. My dear brother, it's okay to leave it. Because sometimes when you get into the marriage, you start getting a lot of shock. You start struggling with it. Some people from some families who are not accepting because, oh, yeah, that you are a stranger from the time you get into that family to the time that you leave that family because, oh, you're from a different, different tribe. With some people trying to impose their own culture trying to take only their own culture and forget about the woman's culture like there are so so many things so so many things another thing i even forgot to talk about is naming the child you see some people are like no 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 they have to give it but this traditional name they have to give that traditional name like in some reasonable cases they'll divide the names in some reasonable cases they'll just give like two names i like, see guys my name is me May is my com name, Vue is my Babanki name because my parents were just like, you know what, this child is our child. Yes, we are from and Babanki, we are from two different areas, but this child is our child, so they gave both names. You get so that's just it, that's what I think about it. What do you think about this whole intertribal marriage? Is it something if you're not married, is it something you consider doing, or you just prefer to be safe and just go and get married to somebody from your tribe? What do you think about this? Let's talk more in the comment section. Are you in an intertribal inter marriage? What are some of the difficulties you're going through? What is the advice you can give some of us? You guys know I like when videos like this are interactive. Let's talk more in the comment section let's just more that is what i'm going for anyway guys thank you very much for watching this one and kenna is going to see you on the next one love you